Let's talk about your business and how much things have changed. When we talk about commercial real estate, I think we don't narrow it down enough. Mm -hmm. How much have things changed for this business over the last, say, decade, a shift away from office to industrial? Could you put some numbers on that for us? So it's definitely shifted. You know, when we think about our business and global commercial banking, it's much more than commercial real estate. That is a part of it, but it is not the only thing that we do. So we work with middle market sized companies and we define that as companies that generate revenue that is 50 million and growing rapidly to $2 billion. And these companies, some are publicly traded, but a lot of them are privately held. And these companies are companies all around the United States. They're typically third to fourth generation now. And um, we're working with these companies not only in the United States, but also in Canada and all of their international subsidiaries around the world. It's related, though, because some of your potential competitors in the past were some of these regional banks, smaller banks, that are constrained with respect to lending because of the commercial real estate uh, loans that are on their books. How much are you gaining share from some, some of those smaller banks that don't have the same kind of capacity that you do? So we did have a fantastic year in 2023. It was a story of growth for us. And there was a lot of market disruption across the board that we saw last year. And we did take share as a result of that. You know, I would say lending is not something where we are constrained. We also have a lot of other capabilities that we deliver to clients that really have nothing to do with our balance sheet that our clients want, whether they're digital capabilities, a lot of very unique cash management solutions, the investment we've made in international, the investment we've made in investment banking, and then also the focus that we have on new economy companies, which is something that's relatively new for us over the last couple of years as our economy is changing. Well, I do wonder if there's sort of an opportunity to go a step further with the weakness that we're seeing in some of the regional banks to acquire whole units to expand. Is that something that's in the, in the potential outlook at all? You know, for Bank of America, we've been focused on organic growth. Uh, responsible growth has been our mantra for many, many years, and we will continue to focus on responsible growth really through organic growth. And we have all the solutions that we need to be able to deliver for our clients. We just continue to invest, and we're really making investments in our team, so we continue to hire more bankers. And we're making a lot of investment in digital because our clients, they want to be able to bank when they want, where they want. They want it to be fast, safe, secure, and easy. And we've got great solutions uh, to help clients on that front. And I'll give you an example. You know, we have a client recently uh, that a new company we were working with, they were doing business in 13 different countries in Asia. And they were working with a variety of different banks. They were concerned about the exposure that they had. They couldn't manage the risk well. They didn't have a lot of visibility into, you know, just the day-to-day -day transactions. Plus, they had a lot of currency risk. And so we were able to um, sit down with them, look at all of their needs, put together a global solution, and they were very happy with that. So we are now their sole provider. So these are the types of ways that we're growing with our clients. And, you know, there's really not an acquisition out there that can help us with that. Is that a trend? Are you seeing more of that in Asia specifically? We're seeing a trend all over the globe. And, you know, when you think about U.S.-based companies and Canadian-based companies that we cover, you know, they've historically done business in North America. And they're really looking at taking advantage of the global growth that exists for them. And so, you know, we actually have three uh, companies that we cover today and just, and not even, we're not even through first quarter. And we've got these three companies, they're looking to grow. They've never uh, done business internationally. They know that they need to increase their exposure. And so we helped not one, but three different companies, different uh, parts of the United States, different industries, but they all have one goal, and that's to grow internationally. One acquired a company in the UK, one in Italy, one in Australia. We helped all of them. And it's not just about M&A. It's also about the core banking needs that these newly acquired subsidiaries are going to have, and we can help them with all of it. It's interesting hear you hearing you discuss this, because I would have thought that life for a company is getting harder to go international. Life for multinationals is becoming more difficult because of policies and countries around the world seemingly putting the walls up. Is that not your experience? So our experience is different. I mean, when you think about a multinational company versus a privately held company that might be in a generation transfer from the third to fourth generation, they have very different considerations. You know, a privately held company, they can think about things over the very long term. Where a multinational, you know, they may have different considerations. And so what we're finding is that our companies that we cover want to grow, and we are well positioned to help them with that. Who are your competitors, your main competitors? Because there has been this discussion around, say, the Apollo or the Aries or the other kind of KKRs of the world trying to eat your lunch. Right. Is that the main competitor or is it 
the other big banks? Is it everyone? So we compete with everybody and some more than others. And so obviously the, the large um, banks that you would think of in the U.S. are our big competitors. I mean, we do continue to compete with the regionals. You asked about the regionals. And, uh, you know, as far as private lenders go, we don't compete with private lenders as much. The, the credit profile of our client um, is a little bit different than what a private lender would um, target. And, you know, we've seen really nice loan growth. We saw great loan growth through last year, and we're seeing good loan growth this year. Do you see the growth, and it's interesting that you mentioned Europe, as stronger there? And do you sort of see cross-border transactions as stronger because the domestic ones are so difficult to actually, uh, to actually get approved? So we see a lot of good opportunity internationally all over the place. So, you know, certainly in EMEA, there's good opportunity. We will continue to invest in banker coverage there. Uh, we also look at and, and we decide where to invest based on where our clients are doing business. And so we also see Asia as a good opportunity. And we have seen a lot of the um, reshoring that happened last year uh, back into, you know, Mexico and into LATAM. And that was another good opportunity. So we will, you know, we added bankers there last year to take advantage of that. I don't want you to tip your toe into the politics, but I have to bring up this question because we heard from the former president over the weekend that if you're a Chinese EV maker and you're positioning in Mexico, we're going to slap you with a 100 percent tariff. I do wonder about the future of nearshoring and whether it might be under threat. How do you think about those broader forces? So, you know, we, we don't focus as much on the politics. We just focus on the needs of our clients. And so if our clients have decided that that's a good opportunity for them to you know, move business uh, back into Mexico, as an example, we have bankers on the ground that can support them. And that's absolutely what we're going to do.